Welcome to the Linda tutorial on the correct adjustment of TIG welding machines. Today, we would like to show you how to set up a TIG welding machine properly. We hope you enjoy this tutorial. Today, we are welding with chromium nickel-based stainless steel. We are using the gas argon 4.6 for this, which is 99.996% pure argon. First of all, connect the pressure regulator. Simply screw it on by hand and tighten using a wrench. Next, connect the gas hose to the pressure regulator and open the main valve. As we are welding stainless steel as the parent material, we recommend using appropriate filler material. Now, connect the hose assembly and attach the ground cable by inserting the jack into the socket. In this instance, we recommend that you use a gold color tungsten electrode, as this is suited to most applications and is not thoriated. Don't forget to check that the tip has been prepared correctly. Our rule of thumb is that the taper on the tungsten electrode should be ground to a length of two times the electrode diameter. To use the tungsten electrode, unscrew the torch cap and insert the tungsten electrode into the torch body. If you are fillet welding, the tungsten electrode should extend by around 6 to 8 millimeters or 0.3 inches beyond the tip of the nozzle. Now we have to turn on the welding machine and check that we have set the correct gas flow. The minimum flow rate is shown on ceramic gas nozzles. Place the gas flow meter on the gas nozzle and check the actual flow rate. To set up the welding machine, you first have to choose between the dip on metal or high frequency ignition setting. The right setting will depend on the welding job in question. Next, set the current. We recommend the following rule of thumb. Approximately 30 amps per millimeter of material thickness or 75 amps per 0.1 inches. Now, Set the correct pulse and choose the slope down time to prevent end craters from forming. The slope down time is based on the thickness of the material. Thicker materials will require a longer slope down time. In our case, we have set it to 1.5 seconds. Next, set the current to avoid end craters. This should be 30% of the amp settings you just selected. Looking now at the gas post-flow time, Users who are new to welding should take particular care not to move the torch away too quickly after welding, as the weld metal will still be glowing. To protect the hot metal from the ambient atmosphere and achieve a perfect welding result, set the gas post-flow time to between 5 and 8 seconds for TIG welding, depending on the thickness of the material. The question of whether to pulse or not to pulse depends on the thickness of the material you are using. If you are welding thin sheets, in other words material less than a millimeter or 0.4 inches thick, choose pulsing. Next, we are going to set the gas pre-flow time. You may be wondering why we need to do this. Quite simply, this setting prevents pores from forming. We recommend that you set 0.1 seconds of pre-flow time for 1 meter or 40 inches of hose assembly. If you are using a 4 meter or 13 foot assembly, for example, we recommend a pre-flow time of 0.4 seconds. We recommend that you set the starting current to 30% to prevent the tungsten electrode from splicing. The final setting is the slope up time. To protect the electrode against excess loads, we are setting the slope up time in this instance to 0.2 seconds. As a general rule, Thicker materials require a longer slope-up time. And that's all there is to it. All you need to do now is make sure that you are wearing the correct personal protective equipment. Once you have connected the ground cable to the workpiece, you can start welding. We hope that you have learned some useful tips about how to correctly set up your TIG welding machine in this tutorial. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions.